Okay guys, welcome to uh, Kingdom Come Gaming Channel. Uh, as you guys have probably figured out, we're expanding the channel to cover more than just hero clicks right now. And I have my buddy here today who's a teammate and uh, one of my good friends, um, Todd, Solomon, James, say hey. Hey, what's going on guys? And uh, this is his deck that we're going to do today, which some people call Vader Trader or Vader FN. And um, I've been playing, he's been teaching me this new game and this thing is freaking brutal. So I want to do a deck profile, have him explain to you guys um, how it works and, and why he made some of these choices. Alright, so um, how you guys doing? Uh, so yeah, I play Vader 9s, Vader FN. Um, these are arguably two of the best characters in the game. Some would argue that FN is the best character in the game. Um, For sure. And um, I've been hearing rumors about Narada. Please no, please no Narada. <laughs> um, but uh, so this is a 22 health deck, 11 health on FN, 11 health on Vader. Uh, it's the perfect combination is 30 points. Vader at 17 elite and FN at elite 13. So it's 30 points. And um, this is a really, really, really aggro deck. This deck hits like a truck. Um, my buddy Jared here will tell you that it does. Um, a lot of players um, will tell you. I actually placed second in um, my local store championship tournament with this deck. So I'm um, gonna go ahead and do the profile, continue to do this profile. So Vader has four damage sides which is really really good so normally he's always rolling some form of damage and fn is dice aren't that great they're average but what really brings them over the top is that when you play a weapons on him he can resolve them immediately so um some people like to override and overlap or just play weapons on him because of that cheat um, so FN has really taken storm lately in the meta right now. So um, the battlefield that I like to play is Moisture Farm. The reason why is because as you can see, this deck is going to struggle getting money. Um, so I've had to build in build in ways to get money, and having Moisture Farm is huge because. Um, if you claim early enough, you automatically have your turn, the money for your turn three upgrades, your cost three upgrades. So, um, Moisture Farm is big for this deck. And it, the times that I'm on the battlefield and I have Moisture Farm have been keys to some of my biggest combos. So, I'm going to go ahead and go to the weapons. Now, I have Viber Knife and Holdout Blaster. Those are your standard gray neutral weapons. Um, they have ambush actions and they help me really cheat when it comes to rolling out with FN. So not only do I get to play a Viber Knife or play a Holdout Blaster, I get to immediately result, roll it out and resolve whatever I get. And then I use the ambush action to roll out either Vader or roll out FN. So the, the holdout blaster is great for helping me cheat, but Vibro Knife is where the money is because um, even though FN and Vader have a range, one range side, their most of their sides are melee. So the Vibro Knife really helps with that. And of course, Vibro Knife is unblockable damage, so it gets through shields. So a lot of people like to hide behind their shields, but when this Vibro Knife is out, they're kind of... Um, everyone knows they're they're a little scared. So um, there's Viber Knife, there's Holdout Blaster. Next, there's the Rocket Launcher. The Rocket Launcher is arguably one of the best red weapons, if not the best red weapon in the game. Each side you do have to pay for, but the sides are brutal. It has a three, three, four, and a special side. So with the special side, you can do two damage. To each character, which is brutal, or you can remove a uh, a 
a vehicle from play. So in this new meta, rocket launchers are going to be huge. I know you guys have been seeing the vehicles coming out. So rocket launch is going to be big. After that, I have the baton. The baton is another very, very good weapon. It has two, two damage black sides, a three damage pay side, and a resource and two blanks. And the great thing about this um, weapon is you get to re-roll it after you've rolled it into your pool if you don't like what you have, which is a big, big help for um, probability to make sure that you do the damage. And with FN's effect, if you roll the two, you get to resolve it immediately. So this is a, a cost three and it hits like a tank and this adds to the overall strategy. And then finally, my last two, my last weapon is the lightsaber. Um, me personally, the lightsaber for me is, um, it's good when I'm cheating, but, and it's good for the redeploy. Because the redeploy is huge, and then uh, what while stuff is going off, if, if one of them dies, I get to move the the weapon to the other character, and then maybe play it later for a, a overlap it for a rocket launcher or for the baton when I get it. So um, it's good. It's good in the overall strategy of the deck. I'm not a personal fan of the lightsaber. Um, because the sides are okay, you have do have 50% damage, but in my deck, I'm limited when it comes to money. So in actuality, a lot of times, I'm I only have realistically one damage side, which is the special two unblockable. So um, it's not my favorite for this deck, but I know with a lot of people they do like lightsaber and. You know, there's times where I, I roll money and I because I need money and it helps with my overall strategy. So these are the weapons for my deck. Now uh, let's go to the removal. So I run eight removal, and that's best defense, which is a one cost, isolation, which is a one cost, overconfidence, one cost, and doubt, which is a zero. Now um, I never used to run best defense in this deck because. I didn't like the fact of damaging FN. I wanted to keep him alive. But I had a lot of times where endgame, Vader dies, and then isolation and overconfidence have become useless in my hand because it's a spot blue. So there's a lot of cards that state you have to spot a character that got to be alive in order for you to use the card. So a lot of times when um, Vader was dead, I would have only, I would go from from six removal to two removal when Vader dies. So it was really, really, really bad. So I added best defense so that regardless of who's alive, I have removal in my deck. I stay at four removal most of the time. And um, with Vader alive, if they go after Vader, I have six removal. So I, I still have game when it comes to mitigating dice. Um, no matter who my opponent goes after. Because in this strategy, both these characters are very dangerous. And um, the, I make you pay no matter who you go after. And that's been proven over time. So, um, now, after the, the removal, we have the events. Now, the events, everyone's events are going to be a little different, but... Since I struggle for money, I need Enrage. Enrage is huge. Because most times, I am i don't really care if Vader dies. So I'll help you out sometimes for the sake of money. Because I need money to make this deck work. So I like to play Enrage because I need money. Um, intimidate, man, a lot of people probably wonder why Intimidate. Um, the reason why I put Intimidate in my deck is because even today through testing, there's little times where I roll out big and because my opponent has shields, it gives them the time they need to kill me and I hate that. So I don't want to remove their shields and they roll out and they think they're safe and then I play this and that's, sometimes I've ended games because I played this. So that's the reason why I put Intimidate. A lot of my friends don't like it. I'll pioneer it. I'll, I'll run it. Um, 
Also, I play logistics, so it's very situational. It's a spot red, um, but when I roll money, it adds. I can resolve for extra money, which is huge. Uh, boundless ambition. Since my deck runs so fluidly, boundless ambition helps me get to the cards that I need when I need them, and I'm able to resolve whatever I need when I need it. So it's a great card to help me because. There's not one card, honestly, in this deck that isn't useful. Every single thing works and is very fluid. And that's one of the things I love about this deck. I normally have either one or no cards in hand when I'm done. And it's not unproductive. It's all productive. They've all done something at some point. Oh, I, want, I want to ask you, um, how did you settle on eight weapons? Like, Was there times where you were playing with more weapons? Than that and you whittled it down and why so well to be honest I, I there are some builds out there that run 16 to 18 weapons and like I I don't think there's that many good weapons in the game right now for FN to use for the sake of cheating um, I think a lot of it is a waste so um, I did have four speed but a lot of times, late game, if Vader's dead, force speed is useless because I'm not running holocrons in this situation. So um, f I took the force speeds out and I put in the best defense, and it really has not hindered. I normally always have my weapons. I'm not scr uh, hoping that I get weapons or anything like that. I know a lot of people may look at this and say, man, this is more events than weapons. How are you able to do so much damage output? But it works. It's proven and it wins. And also, I have, the I have enough mitigation to stay alive and last long games. And um, I have enough finesse here to where I can do combos. I have a lot, I have many different combos that I can pull off with this deck. So, um, yeah, so basically the 10 weapons is honestly the sweet spot. And maybe in the new set, I'm hoping to maybe upgrade lightsabers to something better than lightsabers because I personally don't like it, but that's, that's just me. Um, so there's logistics, obviously tactical mastery. Tactical mastery is is dumb. It is pure stupid. I get two actions and you can't do anything about it. Um, and it's it just is what it is. And when FN has two or three upgrades, or you know FN has two or three upgrades, it's just brutal. Um, but I wanted to just spend a little time talking about one of my favorite, if not my favorite card in this deck, is Imperial War Machine. There's no greater feeling than rolling out a rocket launcher having no money to resolve it and your opponent doesn't know if you have Imperial War Machine or not and then you resolve it. It's the best feeling in the world. It is so fun and everyone forgets that there is Imperial War Machine. It's a zero cost to play a cost weapon for free. So these Imperial War Machine and Rocket Launcher are for the most part married to each other. Um, but Imperial War Machine helps in so many situations because I, I can play my upgrades and not have to necessarily worry about money. So, um, so yeah, so this is my deck and it hits like a truck. I normally end every game with two to three upgrades on no matter who you go after. Either it's FN or Vader. Um, what are you mulligan for? Well, what I'm mulliganing for here, so mulligan hand, probably the best hand I want to see is I want an enrage so I can play a turn three. It doesn't matter what weapons I have. This is the great thing about this deck. The mulligan options are limitless. It's not like I've seen like you play Kylo Vader, Kylo Vader, Emo Kids, or you play Vader Raider and it's like, man, you got to mulligan your whole hand for holocrons. Um, this, it really doesn't matter what weapon I see, as long as I have a three drop and a two drop, I'm good. And it doesn't matter which some, sometimes it doesn't matter if I have two, three drops. It really, it really doesn't matter because, um, also what I also want to see is those two, either two weapons, enrage, a removal, and 
it doesn't really even matter. <laughs> uh, those are the four cards I need. The fifth card does not matter. It helps my overall strategy. It always will. So it doesn't matter if it's another weapon or it's in another event. It all helps another removal. Um, so really, I'm looking for um, two weapons. So I'm really looking for three things. Two weapons and an enrage or logistics if I don't have the enrage. A way to ex make my money more. Um, stuff I don't want to see in hand is tactical mastery. I hate mulliganing and getting tactical mastery because I normally never use it turn one and it's just for this strategy it doesn't work. Turn two is normally when I like to see tactical mastery. So every time I pull tactical mastery I send it back if I can. So um, I don't like to have tactical mastery in hand so that's one thing and honestly that's it. Also, another thing I do want to mulligan for is Boundless Ambition. Boundless Ambition in my opening hand also is really good because um, it, if I have Boundless and Enrage, this guarantees me getting to my weapons extremely early. And um, so the overall strategies after you mulligan is damage really doesn't matter turn one. You take damage what you can get. Vader is most times my turn one damage. And if you remove his dice, that's fine. Um, but with FN, I'm looking for money. I'm rolling his dice. Even if I'm showing damage, It really, unless I have a, a nice combo where I'm about to do at least four damage, if it's any less than four damage, I'm pitching to reroll to get money. Because I'm thinking end game, not beginning game. Because this deck is a game ender. That's what its strength is. Whatever damage I do in turn one, if I do six damage turn one, great. If I do four, two, none, great. I've won games where I've done no turn one damage, because but I have probably like seven money because this deck ramps so fast with the boundless ambitions and the multiple upgrades with the cheating on FN. And if, um, if they go after, most people go after Vader because Vader is such a huge threat, and um, nobody wants to see an endgame Vader with f more than one dice. Um, I don't. Put, I normally don't put any upgrades on Vader unless he's dying. So, um, but there are some people who like to go after FN, and um, that's when I have my redeployables. My, I have my holdouts. I have my uh, baton, riot baton, and I have my lightsabers. So that um, they all move to Vader when FN dies. And now you got to deal with the monster. So guys, this is my deck. And um, I've t spent a lot of tweaking and a lot of hours. I think right now, I mean, some people argue or comment, yeah, I don't like this. You should take this out. I even took it out and I tried other things. But this is what I'm comfortable with. Um, and... Yeah, that's this is it, and this is what I'm gonna be playing until the new set drops. So, all right, well, thank you so much for your time, buddy. Um, if you guys watching, if you have any ideas about what would be a better change, or if you've been playing um, Vader FN, if if you have some advice or something, please hit us up in the comments. Hit the like and subscribe button, and we'll do our best to keep getting you more content.